Namaskar everyone, how are you? Hopefully everybody's been doing fantastic. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by and checking it out. I hope you're going to stick around. If you're already a subscriber and you watch my videos, thank you and welcome back. Now we all know when I say welcome back, that must mean we're on a whole new adventure. And that's true for today. Usually the questions that come after that is where are we and what are we doing? Well, looks like we're in Willoughby, Ohio. Willoughby, Ohio is the only town at one time or another has been part of six different counties. Look at that, right off the bat, we're starting the video with a fun fact. How crazy is that? <laughs> Pretty cool though, right? Now I was gonna do my intro at a totally different sign. I haven't been up to Willoughby in a long time, but uh, my old sign's gone, and uh, this one's a new one, which looks pretty cool. I, I dig the, uh, the train up there, and uh, that actually might go with today's adventure, actually. Um, so that, that's actually pretty cool. Um, what are we gonna do in Willoughby, and where in the heck is Willoughby, Ohio? Well, Willoughby, Ohio, first I'll tell you where Willoughby, Ohio is. It's, it's actually, we're in Northeast Ohio and it's actually, it's actually on, on, the, on the coast of Lake Erie and, and we're not too far from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, what are we gonna do in Willoughby? We are going to talk about how the town claimed, loved, and, and still holds on to someone they didn't even know. Um, but again, Look at this sign. I just want to show everybody this sign because a lot of the sign goes with, with some of the, the dates and uh, things I will talk about today. You got the train up there. That's pretty cool. Obviously, Willoughby. And established 1835. So keep those, keep those in mind. And actually, Clive Fields restaurant over there. The sign used to be right here. There was an old Willoughby sign over there, but that's the old uh, restaurant. Uh, cool building over there and a, and a historic building as well. But uh, you know what? If you're ready to get on with today's adventure, get off the couch. What, it, what the heck are you doing anyway? Is, is that lime wire? <sighs> anyway, get off the couch, get ready and let's go. We are right here. Right here. That is fantastic. Gotta go. <laughs> oh, shoot. Look at all of them. I think they're ready to kick my ass. Harden saliva. You're okay. You're okay for watching my channel. Jesus, God, Mamma Mia, look what we got. I said there's people still sleeping, calm down. We're gonna go, we're gonna go. I told you she was afraid of bridges. Do not, stop it now. That is the starting point of the trail. I, I guess, I don't know. You can start at the beginning or you can start at the end. I don't think it matters wh where you start at, uh, but wherever you start, that's your starting point. <laughs> oh shit. That's why I tell you, if anybody's looking for an HJ, this is the spot. Take a sip. <sighs> History. Better Malanga. Hey, you made it. I hope you dressed warm because it is cold. I need to start doing videos uh, in the warm now. It's I think it's only like 29 degrees, so it's it's freezing outside. It's cold, and I, I don't like it. But you know what? We're not we're not here to talk about the cold. We're here to talk about our adventure today. And uh, we know we're in Willoughby, Ohio, and we know we're going to talk about uh, someone the town has embraced and loved for years and still loves for years. That brings us to the Willoughby Sharp Avenue Cemetery. That's right, we are at a cemetery. And what are we doing in the cemetery? 
you know before I go into that let me show you I, I always like to show you some of the plaques uh, because you never know you know you go to cemeteries I've been to some old cemeteries where they replace these these pillars and such and uh, you know they're gone you know so but I, I do like pillars I like when they put these uh, plaques up I see a veterans memorial back there but what are we doing at a cemetery today well man that's that's nice wow well what we're doing in the cemetery is we are gonna have to go we're gonna go back to December 1933 actually it would have been December 23rd 1933 so that was a day before a day before Christmas Eve uh, Christmas week a young lady stepped off of a Greyhound bus here in Willoughby and I don't think this was I don't think this was the intended goal for her to be um, because I think that uh, she was at a Greyhound bus station and she was looking for either Erie, Pennsylvania or Elmira, New York. That's nice. But she ended right here in Willoughby, Ohio. Um, and I, I'm going to tell you this story. And of course, if you watch my videos, you know I go off the subject and I, if I see something neat. But uh, we're just going to take a little stroll here and I'll tell you the story of, of who we will be talking about today. So we know a young lady ended up here uh, December 23rd in Willoughby, Ohio. Uh, when she stepped off that bus, it was, it was cold. It was probably like today. It might even been a little colder than today. Um, it was early evening. It wasn't totally dark yet, but darkness was darkening. Darkness was setting in. Um, she was looking for a place to stay, and uh, a stranger to her uh, pointed out to a boarding house, and the owner of that boarding house would have been Mary Judd. Now, this lady, the young lady, told Mrs. Judd that her name was Kate. And that was it. No uh, why she was there. Nothing else. Nothing else. Just told my, my name is Kate. Kate. So she took the key. She went up to her room. And the next morning, she came down. She went to the common room. And she was waiting for breakfast. And she had breakfast. And she asked Mrs. Judd where, where the main train station was and where the local church was, which wasn't really off the wall, which wasn't, you know, weird at all because it was, it was Christmas Eve. You know, you want to go to Christmas Mass. Um, you know, she came in off a bus. No one knew who she was, so obviously she was a traveler, so she probably wanted to check out the train station you know get a ticket or whatever now mind you she was all dressed in blue blue dress blue coat blue shoes blue hat blue uh blue scarf everything was blue and uh she went out and she came back uh she came back in an hour or so and to Mrs. Judd's surprise, she, uh, this young lady came back down the stairs and had her luggage with her and, uh, she checked out. She paid her, she paid her bill, turned the keys in and it was just a surprise because she just got there was, and just spent the night. Um, man, look at that. I hate when I see these, uh, down like this. I mean, obviously they're old, so they they um they do break and stuff with the elements but at least they're still here daniel moore wow 
Um, it was just surprised to Mrs. Judge that she left so quick. Um, and not knowing who she was, where she was going, why she, you know, why she was there, what, all the questions, you know. But um, the young lady did say Merry Christmas, and she didn't talk to anyone. She 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 was polite, and she hello, you know, Merry Christmas and, and such. But she didn't give no information of no small talk whatsoever. Nobody knew who she was. Nobody knew why she was there. Sorry if the wind is is uh, bad for this video, but it is windy today. So anyway, she went out and she was walking around. There's a squirrel running over there. She was running around and, not the squirrel was running around. Anyway, she went outside. The young lady went outside and she was walking around and just, nowhere in particular so everybody was just you know found it found it strange like who who is she uh, you know what's she doing well she ended up uh, by the edge of the woods and she went into these woods now that's where that's where some of the locals found it strange and was like what's going on what is she doing well she went through the woods. She ended up making it through the woods to the other side. Now, on that other side, man, it's cold. On the other side, through the woods, that is where the train tracks were. She met up with train tracks. Now, at that time, at that time when she exited the woods, a New York Central passenger train was barreling down the tracks. Now this is where some locals say that she dropped her suitcase and she ran in front of this train. She got struck by the train. She got uh, hit and pushed out onto the gravel side. And when authorities got there, they were amazed because there, was, there, there were no wounds to her. Look at that uh, gravestone right there, Earl Rosin. Huh. There were no wounds. There, there were no wounds. There was no blood. Um, later on, they would find out that the, the actual, the actual uh, cause of death was a fractured skull. And man, some of these, some of these grave markers are. Uh, are kind of neat. I don't think this is an old cemetery. I, I'm I'm seeing late 1800s. Um, yeah, I don't think it's like too too old. It's old, but not not crazy old. But uh, yeah, the the cause of death they find out what was a, a skull fracture. Now they were also amazed that there was no. There was no identification of who this young lady was. Look at that, that's an old one right there. Or old as in the elements have got to. Um, the purse that she, was, that she had on her, it had 90 cents in it. It had a ticket to Cory, Pennsylvania. Had some trinkets in it. And uh, I think a handkerchief was in it. And we got to take a look at this. And look at that. Wow. Check that out. I've not seen one that was inscribed like that on top. Wow. That's neat. Now, the luggage that she had, it had no identification in, in it either of who it was. Um, I, I believe it had a couple towels in it. Or whatnot so no no identification whatsoever she was taken to the Mc, McMahon funeral home and she was there for for some quite time um, and she was laid out people hundreds of people came by to just to see if they knew her to put 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 a name to this face to claim who she was you know and uh, 
and at this at this funeral home that's when they discovered that that's that was the cause of death was the fractured skull that's where they found that out um it was january 5th 1934 that she was buried and again she was buried after being set out and, and having people come in and, and see if they knew her. So she was buried. Um, a, a burial plot was donated to her. And then a headstone, they actually had uh, the townspeople got together for a, uh, to, to collect money and such to, to get her a headstone. Um, so she did get a headstone and i will show you the headstone in a little bit i'm i'm just i just wanted to walk around the whole cemetery it's not a big cemetery tell the story and we'll get to where she's buried at because i'm going to go back to the gates uh where i started and i show you exactly where to get to her gravesite. um so she was buried and uh she does have a headstone in it. It when we get up there, I'll show you it it does read the girl in blue. There was no name. Nobody knew who she was. Now, in those in those years after, those couple years after, people have be, people did come forward and be like, hey, that's that's my wife, that's my sister, and you know, nothing ill intended, but none of those stories, none of those stories came true. Uh, they weren't positive. So it was still no one knew who this was. Even in 1836, a man came into town, even talked to detectives. And his name was Leo. Uh, Oh man, I gotta think of the name now. Uh, my pronunciation is is terrible. Uh, Klitzneck. Klitzneck. I hope I get the. I hope I get the pronunciation right uh, because I, I, I get no ill intention from me. The, uh, Klitzneck. It was the last name, Leo Klitzneck, and said that that was his sister, Josephine. Josephine Sophie. That's what everybody used to call her, was Sophie. And he, he told the story of, of how in 1833, she left for Erie, Pennsylvania, and after Erie, Pennsylvania, she was to go to Detroit. Now that was, that was 1836. So we go, we go to, I believe it was 1993, 1993, uh, there was a, uh, an ad put in to the local paper. It was the 60th anniversary for the girl in blue. And it caught an eye of a real estate, uh, a real estate agent, Ed, Ed, uh, I want to say Saranac, but that's a, that's a, a, a beer. Uh, I will get the name for you when I get done. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of the, of the, the guy's last name, but, uh, he was a real estate agent. His name was Ed. And he was doing he was doing some sales on a farm in Pennsylvania and he recognized the picture of this girl and he was like that's that's the daughter of these two uh, people that I am working with or that I have worked with and uh, that that made the investigation start up again and they went into some real estate uh, real estate records, tax records, etc. And they found out that this was indeed Josephine Sophie 
his snack. I, 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 I apologize for the last name because I don't know if I'm pronouncing, uh, pronouncing that correctly. But how about that? Josephine, you go back to 1836 when Leo came into town. So, uh, yeah, quite, quite the story there. Uh, this could have been solved a long time ago if they would have delved deeper, but maybe they just didn't have those records or whatnot. So, what we are going to do is I'm going to show you how to get to the girl in blue, uh, her grave site. So, this is the main entrance of the cemetery. Willoughby Sharp Cemetery. This is where we started, right here. So, we're going to go through this gate. And then it just jogs to the left here. So, uh... In 2002, since they knew a name for Josephine, in 2002, they ended up putting a, a footstone on the grave with her name on it. And that was, I think it was Kotecki, Kotecki Monuments out of Cleveland, Ohio that donated that uh, to her. So that was awesome. And they did keep they did keep the headstone because this town knows her as the girl in blue and I, I believe by taking that the actual headstone down uh, would have would have uh, downed you know downed her personal story and it would have took away from her. So I don't think the town wanted that at all. So and, it, and I believe there was also a fund at the time after she died that, that uh, every year on the anniversary she would have flowers or a wreath on her grave. And I, I think they still do that to this day. But that's where we came from. And here's the crossroad. What you want to do is here's one tree, two tree, and that third tree is where we're going to be walking to. Real easy to get to. Real easy to get to. So what we're going to do is we're going to get to this third tree. Hold on one second here. I got to for a minute okay so what we're gonna do you come to this third tree right here and you're gonna come up to the Myers stone right here okay and then you see that tree back there that splits that's where we're gonna be going to and I think it's about 30 paces from here but check this <laughs> tree out Wow that is that is awesome the way that looks wow yeah but the girl in blue man it is it is cold outside Whew, so yep i think i believe it's 30 i believe it's 30 paces to get to there but people i i was going to do this uh christmas eve i was going to come up here or close to christmas eve but people come here uh, it gets busy at that time of year because people pay their respects. They pay their they pay their respects all the time here, as you'll be able to see. But I hope I did get the name right of of uh, Klimzak, Josephine Klimzak, and Leo Klimzak. Um, if it, if I didn't get that name right, I apologize um, because it's it, the way it's spelled. I'm not sure if I'm uh, pronouncing that right. But yes, here we go. And I don't know if I told you uh, her parents. Her parents were her parents were Polish immigrants. Uh, Jacob, Jacob, and Catherine uh, Klimczak. And uh, they they actually died in 1835, in uh, within six months of each other. So 
sad, sad story. And uh, a lot, a lot, of, still a lot of questions. Even though we, you know, we have a name for the girl in blue, there, there is a lot of questions. But here, here is the girl in blue, and there is the headstone. There's the headstone right there, and that's that's what the community uh, saved money for. It uh, was in memory of the girl in blue, killed by train December 24th, 1933. And if you look at the at the bottom, I don't want to move anything, but it says unknown but not forgotten. So there's the girl in blue. And then right here is the footstone. And it still has girl in blue identified as Josephine Klimzak. See, again, the name, it, there's a C and a Z. So I'm, I'm hoping I, I did get the name of Leo and Josephine Sophie Klimzak right. Died December 24th, 1933. And yeah, Koteki Monuments, I think, donated, donated that uh, for Josephine. So that's pretty awesome. But yeah, people leave things here. Uh, it's pretty neat. Yeah, and I believe if it wasn't for Ed Sikarik, I think that was the name, Ed Sikarik, uh, if it wasn't for the real estate agent, Ed, uh, we might have never found out uh, who the girl in blue was. Oh, wow, yep girl in blue people come here to pay their respects and I was just for purposes because this is a a train town and that is how she that is how she died um, every now and again you can hear the trains in the background which is kind of eerie it kind of puts that that eerie feeling and surreal feeling when you come here I don't know if somebody did that or they just were stupid uh, leaving that there, but I'm still not going to touch it. Uh, but yeah, again, I was going to do this next month, but I figured with the snow on the ground, it's probably going to snow. You wouldn't be able to see the footstone um, and such. So I came up here today to do it. It's still, it's still cold, but... It would have been cold that day she was up here and she stepped off that Greyhound bus. Now, a lot of the questions, a lot of the questions that still remain are, you know, why was she here? Why did she choose Willoughby? Um, you know, where was she going? What, what was she doing? Why didn't she talk so much? Um, did she jump in front of the train? Was it suicide? That was another thing I wanted to say on her death certificate. Even though they have a name uh, to go with, her death certificate still says the girl in blue. It doesn't say Josephine. It says the girl in blue. And unfortunately, it does state that it was suicide. Do, I don't know. Do we know that? I, I don't know. It's one of those questions and then what was the what was the blue did she really love blue so much um or did it mean something was there something significant about the color blue to her so those are some of the questions that we'll probably never find out we'll never know but at least we do have a name but i'll uh i'll show you some of the trinkets that people leave behind obviously they leave flowers and there's some dolls and a heart, the angels. Must have been Easter at some time because there's an egg. Uh, I don't know, maybe somebody was here eating something, you know. Um, and if you look on there, if you look on the on the website for the cemetery, man, who that went, wow. There's some light up sticks, pumpkins. Yeah, you can, man, it is freezing. It is freezing. Wow. But if you go on the on the website for this cemetery, um, you can leave virtual flowers for her on there. And uh, it'll tell, because uh, she did have some, some uh, brothers and sisters and they, they name a couple of those. 
they name her parents and uh i don't know if you can donate to her for you know to leave flowers and stuff for her you might want to call them and check into that as well um but yeah it's a very surreal story and it's it's i love how the city still to this day embraces embraces it so real easy to get to it's a it's a uh it's an interesting story um and i i think uh I think that's it for today. I'm actually going to stay here a little bit longer. I have my own uh, thing I want to put on her on her grave and, and give my respects to her as well. So um, whatever the reason she died for, I don't know, but I hope she uh, I hope she found the light that she was looking for. So and I hope you like this adventure. It's freezing, so that's why I'm blabbing. I might not be talking right, but um, I'm glad you came on today's adventure. And hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And uh, if, like I said, if you're new, I hope you're going to stick around. And uh, time, to, time to pay my personal respects. So until I see you on the next adventure, wherever that may be, better Malanga. Well, 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 I do this from time to time and I forget uh, to say something. Well, if you watched my previous videos, you know from now until the new year, I will be hiding a $10 gift card on every one of my adventures. This adventure is no different. Right now I have a $10 Dunkin' Donuts gift card for you to enjoy a hot... Uh, a hot coffee, a hot chocolate, whatever you want from Dunkin' Donuts uh, that you can get for 10 bucks um, to enjoy after watching my video and going on that adventure for yourself. So, if you come on this adventure, I would say you probably want to look oh, right around in this area right in there for that gift card so and again when you find the card leave it in the comments put it on your own uh, personal media pages or whatnot because I know you can't post pictures uh, and and post them to YouTube on on the comments but uh, spread the word of my channel I'd appreciate it and uh, again look at that spot right there <laughs> and uh hopefully you find the gift card so this is the end of the video so until i see you on the next adventure better my life.